Thursday, March 7, the third angel's message. Question. How does Revelation 14.12 depict God's faithful people? Revelation 14.12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. In contrast to God's faithful people, Revelation 14, 9 and 10 warns about the fate of those who face God's wrath. In the Old Testament, the outpouring of God's wrath is described symbolically as drinking wine from a cup, as we read in Jeremiah 25, verses 15 and 16. For thus says the Lord God of Israel to me, Take this wine cup of fury from my hand, and cause all the nations to whom I send you to drink it. And they will drink and stagger and go mad because of the sword that I will send among them." The severity of the judgment upon the worshippers of the beast is expressed as drinking the wine of the wrath of God that is poured out without mixture, as it says in Revelation 14, verse 10, into the cup of his indignation. In ancient times, people often diluted wine with water to reduce its intoxicating strength. But the wine of God's wrath is described as unmixed, or the Greek, akratao, The unmixed, undiluted wine represents the pouring out of God's wrath in its full strength, without mercy. Question. Read Revelation 14, 10 and 11, along with Revelation 20, verses 10 to 15. How do Isaiah 34, 8 to 10 and Jude 7 shed light on the statement, And the smoke of their torment ascends for ever and ever. Revelation 14. Beginning at verse 10, He himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends for ever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name." And Revelation 20, verses 10 to 15. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night for ever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and any one not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And Isaiah 38, verses 8 to 10, For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, the year of recompense for the cause of Zion. Its stream shall be turned into pitch, and its dust into brimstone. Its land shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night or day. Its smoke shall ascend forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. No one shall pass through it forever and ever. Jude 7 reads, As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. The statement of the torment with fire and brimstone refers to total destruction. Fire and brimstone is a means of judgment, as we read in Isaiah 34, 8-10, which we've just read, and Genesis chapter 19, verse 24. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. The ascending smoke of destruction is a well-known image in the Bible. Isaiah prophesied of the future destruction of Edom by fire and brimstone. It will become a burning pitch, and Isaiah 34.10 says, It shall not be quenched night or day, its smoke shall ascend forever. 
Jude describes the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah as suffering the punishment of eternal fire in Jude 7, which we've just read. These texts do not talk about endless burning, for none of these cities is burning today. The consequences are eternal, not the burning itself. The eternal fire in Revelation refers to annihilation. The burning will be long enough to make the consumption complete until nothing is left to burn. And so to finish today, although we can be thankful for the great truth that the fires of hell don't torture the lost for eternity, the punishment is still terrible enough. What should the permanence and the severity of the punishment tell us about the sacred task that we have been given to warn others about what is coming? You have been listening to a reading of the Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide by Dr. Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. This service is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department and Christian Services for the Blind. Remember, God is always faithful.